Okay. So we'll start now. Been recorded. Hmm. So um, the last module we so we are covering things from Ozar now, and uh, we are here at module eight. We'll finish this today, and the next class will start with module nine microwave filters. So we were uh, discussing power dividers in the last class. And uh, so we stopped at uh, Wilkinson power divider uh, due to network issues. I could not continue with the class. Uh, so we'll uh, finish power dividers today. Start with directional couplers. Uh, see about hybrid couplers and then uh, we'll, uh, finish the module eight. So the last class, uh, I have I uh, although we could not discuss Wilkinson power divided, but I had shared the slides with uh, which included this. So I hope you have already gone through. Uh, we had already discussed uh, three port networks and T junction power divider. So the, the Wilkinson power divider is just one uh, uh, type of uh, this T junction, which is very popular because uh, uh, it. Uh, Offers uh, uh, it, although it is lossy, uh, it also it offers uh, the all the ports are matched in that in this case, and uh, also uh, it offers what do I uh, just is that no uh, uh, it uh, uh, like. Uh, Yeah, so let's just uh, do, do a quick revision and then we'll uh, start with the powder and then we'll discuss uh, it in detail. Yeah, so uh, we started with uh, the basic properties of dividers and uh, couplers. Again, sorry, uh, this should have been C here. We missed to correct it in dividers and couplers. Um, so power divided, uh, as we discussed, that when you give some input power, um, you receive uh, the power divided into a certain ratio. For example, alpha is to S1 is to alpha, some ratio you get it. And uh, um, a coupler is one in which you give some uh, power alpha and beta, and then you receive alpha plus uh, beta over here. So uh, fairly straightforward, and then we then we started with uh, so for example, so you are uh, sending uh, some input signal over here, and you want to divide it into two signals, right? So that this or you have two signals, uh, and you want to combine it to uh, one signal. So essentially, this means this should be a three-port device. Uh, this can this this can also be translated to uh, uh, like. The power division or power uh, combining can be uh, uh, extended to any number of ports, but uh, let us, uh, uh, for the sake of this uh, like syllabus for this course, we'll just discuss three port and four port devices. So, um, taking a look at the three port uh, power uh, uh, three port device and with, which uh, which combines power from two sources or which uh, splits the power into two. Uh, uh, two ports. Uh, so let's look at the T junction power divider. So we're calling it T because if you look at T, uh, you're sending power. For example, if you're sending power over here, you can receive power from this port and this port. So this looks like a T junction. And uh, for a three port uh, device, uh, this parameters will look something like this. Uh, so we have the S11 to S33 only. In, uh, input from this matrix over here. And if this uh, particular uh, three port uh, device is, uh, is uh, reciprocal, uh, if it is reciprocal, then it implies that this particular uh, matrix uh, should uh, be uh, should be symmetric. So S transpose should be equal to S. S transpose should be equal to S. So in that case, uh, the, this uh, these elements will become equal. And uh, also, if all the ports are matched, 
then uh, there is no reflection from the ports and the SII, that is the S11, S22 and S33, they, uh, they all become zero. So for uh, uh, reciprocal uh, and uh, uh, for a reciprocal network with all the ports matched, the SP matrix will reduce to something like this. So we have considerably, considerably reduced the number of unknowns. So now we just have to, uh, three unknowns. Uh, we started with nine unknowns and now we just have three unknowns. And then again, if uh, if this particular uh, device is uh, lossless, then we have to satisfy this unitary uh, properties. And this will again give us uh, these conditions. And uh, to solve these conditions, we come to note that uh, uh, and all of these uh, conditions cannot be satisfied for this particular matrix. So it implies that uh, a three-port network cannot be simultaneously lossless, reciprocal, and matched at the same time. Uh, so th uh, this we had covered in the last class. So we went through all these steps and checked that uh, this cannot be satisfied for this matrix. But if we relax one of these criteria, for example, if this particular uh, network is not reciprocal, it is just lossless and matched, then what we end up with is what we call a circulator. So uh, circulator is a device wherein you uh, so a circulator is a three port device. So wherein you uh, put the signal at one particular port and you can receive them at uh, and uh, the other two port uh, according to some uh, requirement. For example, if you want to change in phase or you want uh, want to uh, isolate one of the ports. Uh, so this is this is this is a, a circulator. So essentially. So one of the examples would be like you, know, you have three ports, right? So you have three ports, and if you want, uh, if some certain some signal is sent to port one, and, and you want it only to appear at port two, it's port two, and this is port one. So if you are sending a signal at port one, and you want it to appear at port two, but uh, uh, if you are sending a signal at port two, you want it to appear only at port three and not at port one. So uh, you might end up with some circuit where you want to send a signal from here and receive just here and not here. And uh, let me just switch to laser pointer. So you say, uh, if you want to send a signal at port one and receive only at port two and not at port three, but if you send a signal at port two, you want only to receive at port three and not at port one. So this is this is uh, uh, an example of circulator where you are sending a signal and receiving at a uh, selective ports. So then we discuss the circulator in detail and we, uh, we uh, uh, relax the criteria of uh, uh, reciprocity. And then upon solving, we got two possible solutions uh, in uh, one in which uh, the uh, circulation was in clockwise direction. So we called it a clockwise circulator and the other was the counterclockwise circulation. And we looked at there as parameters as well. Then we uh, also uh, looked at an example uh, where we uh, where we showed that uh, uh, a lossless and reciprocal three-port network can be only matched at only uh, can only be matched at two ports. Uh, so we discuss this example. If you if you have any uh, que uh, questions on this, uh, you can follow up me. And then we started with the T-junction power divider, where. Uh, uh, so the, these are the few examples that we discuss. So this is this is a uh, e-plane uh, waveguide T. This is an H-plane waveguide T, and this is a microstrip uh, T-junction power divider. So you can see uh, visibly, you can see T uh, T junctions over here, here, and here. So hence we call them T-junction power dividers. And then we started with our discussion of uh, uh, a lo a lossless power divider. So in this particular case. Uh, all we needed to do was match the admittance at this junction over here. So um, if the admittance is y, uh, y, I -N, uh, y in, uh, and the admittance from over here is 1 by Z1 and 1 by Z2. So we have we had to satisfy this condition over here. And JB, uh, JB was uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, losses at the junction. So if there is no loss at the junction, it will reduce to this equation over here. And uh, we can just... Uh, According to the uh, power division wanted by us, we can substitute the value for Z1 and Z2. And if uh, we want equal power division, we can Z1 equal to Z2 and solve uh, for uh, these in these Z values. And uh, for example, if we wanted uh, equal power division, uh, that is 3 dB split, 
then uh, we uh, if this particular z0 was 50 ohms then z1 and z2 would be 100 ohms and based on similar lines we also uh, solved an example where we divided uh, the power into 2 is to 1 ratio so uh, uh, so if the input impedance was uh, 50 ohms uh, we got z1 and z2 as uh, z1 and z2 as uh, this uh, 30 and uh, sorry uh, 150 and uh, th uh, seven, 75 ohms yeah 150 and 75 ohms then uh, in the previous case the issue was that uh, although uh, the, the system was lossless but the ports are not matched so in that but uh, uh, the ports being matched is an important criteria uh, criteria and so for that we have uh, we have this resistive power divider where we discussed and we showed that uh, all the ports are matched in this case but this particular network is not uh, lossless so we have resistors over here which has essentially caused loss in the system so we we solved uh, for z input for uh, since you can see this particular uh, network is symmetric at, uh, if you look from any of the ports and when we uh, solved for port 1 we uh, found out z input as uh, uh, being uh, z in equal to z naught similarly this happened for all the ports and hence we can say that all the ports are matched but again uh, the issue with the resistive and uh, the uh, lossless power dividers the lossless power divided uh, was not uh, matched at the ports and the resistive power divided was uh, lossy and again even if the uh, uh, was lossy but uh, although it was matched but the issue was that uh, and they did not have isolation between the ports so if uh, if you uh, sent a uh, sent some uh, power from uh, so if some, some, some signal uh, or power was sent from the uh, port 1 it will be received from port uh, 2 and 3 but if uh, uh, just in case if we had some reflections happening at port 2 then the, uh, or some power was uh, uh, sent from power, uh, port 2 then port uh, 1 and port 3 will receive them which we do not want we want these ports to be isolated uh, port 2 and 3 to be isolated so that uh, if uh, uh, and port 1 uh, and 2 to be also be isolated because we don't want any reflections uh, for example if we have some source over here we don't want any reflections uh, traveling towards the source so wilkinson power divided is uh, divider is one such solution where uh, the ports uh, are isolated as well uh, but this this again this particular network is not lossy uh, is not lossless it is lossy because we have a resistor over here but we will see that uh, when, when some, some signal is uh, let me just again switch back to a pen so if we send some signal over here then we will receive uh, uh, equal power division uh, over here 3 db but uh, uh, if some signal is sent from here it will be uh, dissipated across this resistor or if some signal is sent from here then it will be dissipated across this resistor so this is how this works so we started with the even odd uh, uh, analysis in the previous class so for even odd analysis, this is uh, the equivalent circuit of our Wilkinson power divider. And uh, you can see we have this Z0 uh, 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 impedance at the port 1. Similarly, Z0 impedance at port 2 and Z0 impedance at port 3. And we uh, we, we have uh, lambda by 4 quarter transformer over here. And we, we, will, we will show that uh, this particular, uh, if this is some Z, this turns out to be uh, root 2 Z0 and uh, we'll show that this is some if this is some r this turns out to be 2z0 so this this will show uh, by using the even odd mode analysis but before doing that uh, we, we first simplify this circuit so that we can uh, use it uh, use it for uh, even and odd mode analysis so we are trying to make it symmetric from this uh, center over here to draw a line you can see this particular network appears symmetric uh, so the, we had this resistor over here which is split into r by 2 and r by 2 so the series combination will give r and similarly we had um, this impedance over here z0 so uh, if that is not uh, if we are normalized we are normalizing everything by z0 then this particular resistor will appear and this will appear to be one so this will appear to be one but we are since splitting it into two uh, parallel uh, uh, registers uh, so we can uh, uh, take them to be uh, to 
okay so uh, we ended our discussion the last class till here and now we'll uh, continue with uh we can power divider so we'll quickly go through the even mode mode analysis so maybe uh, i'll just pause over here uh, okay let me first cover this slide and then we can take a pause if you have any doubts of how we are reaching through these two circuits so once we have uh, achieved this particular circuit over here uh, uh, what we are doing is we are uh, we have this two voltage sources right so for even mode analysis what we do is we give two volts each to this sources now once we have given uh, uh, equal voltages over here what will happen is uh, the uh, this node and this node will be at the same potential so essentially uh, there will be no current flow over here and similarly uh, although this uh, we have split this node in two parts so this will also be at a uh, same potential and there will be no current flow so if there, if there is no current flow we can assume short circuit to be over here uh, so uh, sorry open circuit to be over here and uh, we get this equivalent circuit for uh, even mode excitation so we, we we can isolate these two circuits and two halves now in case of odd mode analysis what will happen is uh, uh, we, we will give two volts over here and zero volt over here so uh, when we do that what happens is uh, the voltage over here uh, so this is uh, this is uh, one volt. Uh, so this is this is one over here, and uh, we uh, we have this lambda by four uh, line, right? Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So we have. Uh, so we you know, the, there will be. Uh, so we have. Uh, what will happen is we will have. Uh, The, in the input, uh, so we will see how we get uh, the input impedance over here. So the input impedance uh, over here uh, will appear to be uh, one, and hence the voltage over here uh, will. Uh, yeah, the voltage over here will appear to be one volt and zero volt, and similarly, uh, this will. Uh, also, uh, so this will be some positive voltage and this will be some uh, negative voltage if you uh, look at it. Uh, okay, so we'll discuss this again, but uh, uh, you have to take my word for it now. Uh, so we will have some more positive voltage over here and some negative voltage over here. And it will appear that we have some uh, uh, grounding line going on, uh, going about over here. So we can uh, take that ground to be. Uh, uh, just uh, over here and again over here as well. So we can we will take that round over here and we can uh, then we can again split the circuit into two halves. So um, so uh, let's just uh, discuss the even mode first over here and then we will come back to odd mode and see how we are getting the uh, grounding uh, ground over here. Okay. So um, as we discussed, uh, we we put G two and G three equal to two volts. So we have G two and G three over here as two volts. Okay, uh, two volts each. And then uh, uh, since there is no current flow over here, uh, so we have. Uh, so there will be no current flow over here, and there will be no current flow over here as well. So. Uh, when we buy, uh, we can bisect this network over here and then we get this open circuits values over here because there is no current flowing so no current flow means open circuit and uh, if we if we look at uh, port 2 if we are like looking at port 2 uh, the impedance um, okay uh, so if we are looking into port 2 over here so we have this uh, uh, Z over here, and we have uh, this uh, uh, impedance of two over here. So, uh, if and this particular thing is a uh, this is this is a quarter wave transformer, right? So we we know that if for this uh, the impedance over here is Z in, then Z square is equals to Z in into this particular resistance on uh, this impedance over here into two. So if we simplify it, we can get Z in is equals to Z square by two. 
this uh, this thing over here. So we have we have found out z input over here, and uh, uh, and if you, uh, if you if you if we uh, substitute z as uh, root two, then what will happen is this particular uh, uh, if this is root two, then uh, the input impedance will be matched with uh, the increase impedance over here. Uh, the satisfying the quarter wave uh, matching criteria over here and hence uh, so we have uh, we have got this value and so we can take this as uh, root 2 over here so we have uh, found out the value of uh, this z over here now what we are we are left to find this r value so we're trying to match this for even mode now and this z turns out to be root 2 for even even mode excitation and when and if uh, this is root 2 uh, and so this particular uh, that this entire thing is matched, then we can say that, uh, yeah, this entire thing is matched, and uh, um, then uh, V2 uh, will become uh, this V2E, this particular node will become uh, V0. So we are giving uh, two V0 over here, right? So we are giving two V0, and to make this V0, uh, And this will become v naught if this particular thing is matched. So this entire uh, so this is one, and this in, this in, that input over here is also one. If uh, this becomes uh, this z becomes uh, root two. So uh, this will uh, look like a power divided. So we have uh, uh, v g v g two over here, and then we have. Uh, some resistance this this particular resistance over here one and then we have uh, this uh, node v2 uh, and then we have some resistance and then ground which is ground over here so this uh, this uh, this node is uh, this are v2 and then this particular this entire thing is uh, giving us uh, this z input so if this z input becomes one then we have this equal uh, this power divide uh, this this voltage divider thing going on and hence we can uh, then hence we get this v naught as equals to one okay so um, maybe uh, this became a little uh, crowded maybe i can just exit over here Discard this and write this again. Okay. So, so um, the thing is, uh, if this is uh, root two, if we have discussed this, this, this is root, uh, z becomes root two. This entire uh, arm will become matched, and once this entire arm becomes matched, this uh, the input the in, Impedance over here will look like z in, which is equal to one. And then, if this particular this impedance over here is one, and this impedance over here is one, then we can show that uh, if this is uh, two v naught, then this at this node we will have v naught. Okay. So this is this is all we are trying to say. And uh, this R by two, uh, since this is open circuit, this uh, this can be ignored for even mode excitation. Now to find out the voltage at uh, over here, what we can do is we can uh, we can we'll use this transmission line equations over here. So let us just uh, take this particular node as x equal to zero, and then this node as uh, x equal to minus lambda by four. So uh, this is the positive axis. And this is the negative axis. Okay. Okay. So, um, so if we are uh, if we are looking uh, from here, and the, the voltage expression. So, um, V X can be written as V plus uh, E minus J beta X and uh, E J uh, reflect this gamma times E E J beta X and uh, uh, for the transmission line, uh, this this is V two E over here and V one E over here. So at this both nodes, we can write the, uh, we can sub substitute the value of x as zero and lambda minus lambda by four, and we get these two values. So V two we are uh, get uh, we know that that we uh, this we, this 
V two E is uh, V naught. So we have this, and V one E as uh, V plus uh, one plus gamma, and we can substitute uh, the uh, value of V plus from here. So we have this V plus one minus gamma equal to V naught. So we have V plus is equals to V naught by J one plus gamma, and we can substitute that. To get uh, this expression over here, uh, so we have eliminated v plus, which was unknown, and with v not, which we know. So we have v two e and v one e with us, and uh, the reflection coefficient, uh, which is unknown, we can calculate on that very easily. So we are uh, so we are uh, calculating the reflection coefficient gamma, which is seen, uh, which is uh, seen at port one, looking towards the register of normalized value two. So this is the no register of normalized value two. And we have to calculate the reflection coefficient over here in this looking this direction. So, uh, so this this particular uh, z is uh, root two, and this uh, register is two. So, z l minus uh, z naught by z l plus z naught gives us the reflection coefficient. And this term, uh, if we use substitute this value over here, we get v one is equal to minus j v naught root two. So we have we have the voltage uh, over here and voltage over here uh, for even mode. Uh, similarly, for the odd mode. So if uh, for odd mode, what we are doing is we are giving two volts over here, two v uh, sorry two v naught over here and minus two v naught over here. Okay. So uh, if we do that, uh, uh, since the circuit is symmetric. Uh, We will have V two not O over here, V two O and V three O over here. And since this is symmetric, this both uh, this will be equal to negative of these values. Okay. So in that case, what will happen is we will have some voltage null over here, and similarly, uh, we will have voltage null over here as well. Okay. So whatever will be the Voltage value over here. This will be negative of that value. So uh, exactly in the mid plane, we will have some voltage null, and that is why we get. We can just put a short circuit over here in this line, and we can separate the upper and lower halves. Now, once we have that, um, we can uh, we can uh, we can calculate the value of R by two. From the even mode analysis, we have got the value of Z, and now from the odd mode analysis, we will get the value of R by two. And uh, so, if we look at, uh, into port two, we can see the impedance of R by two since the parallel connected transmission is lambda by is lambda by four long and shorted at port one, so it looks like an open circuit. So, what we are trying to say is this is shorted over here, and this is lambda by four. And so, hence, what we see over here is open circuit in this direction. So if we try to look into this arm over here, this will be look uh, this will look open circuit, and hence what uh, if we if we are looking from uh, just before this node, uh, the only thing we will see is this R by two. And to keep this R by two, uh, uh, okay, uh, and from even mode analysis, we have uh, we have to make sure that this becomes equal to uh, uh, so uh, we. Uh, for matching, we want this equal to be uh, one. Uh, Uh, one V not. Uh, sorry, that is V not. If we want this to be uh, V not, we have to make this R by two uh, equal to one. Uh, so hence, this we have this R is equals to two. Okay. So this is this is uh, this is very straightforward. So uh, this automatically becomes open circuit this arm, and we we have to make uh, we have to uh, uh, match this, and hence for that we are making this R is equals to two. So if R is equal to two, this also becomes one, and the voltage over here will become V naught. So that's it. We have we have found out the value of Z and R, which we intended to do, and uh, so uh, and now the uh, for uh, the for to find the S parameters of this entire network, what we need is the uh, the uh, uh, the voltage. Uh, The input impedance uh, at port one uh, when the port two and port three are matched. So if the port two and three are matched, which is by one, sorry, I just uh, highlighted the. Uh, 
ground over here. Yeah, I, I intended to highlight this entire thing. So, uh, so they're matched. Uh, so they're matched with uh, one over here. Uh, this normalized uh, characteristic impedance one over here, and we have to find out the input impedance over here. So uh, we have this as root two over here, and uh, if, if both of them are given the same potential, we can just uh, uh, remove this. Uh, we can just uh, because no current will flow from over uh, from through uh, uh, this resistor. And uh, this is the quarter wave situ uh, transfer uh, situation going on over here. And for, for that case, the uh, and if this is one, the input impedance of this arm will uh, become equal to root two square. And similarly, this will also become equal to root two square. And since both of them are in parallel, we will get a root uh, two by two, which is equal to one. So that is what is uh, done over here. And so we have skipped some steps. So I'll uh, let you uh, try this out yourself. So this is uh, just uh, see the imp impedance over here, see the impedance over here, and the impedance of the quarter wave transformer, and you will get it. And both of these are in parallel. So you have to calculate the value of Zn. And this will come out to be 1. So but, uh, after, uh, so we have uh, all, the uh, all the necessary information to write down the S parameters of this circuit now. Uh, okay, so uh, for S11, uh, we had Z, uh, Zn equal to 1, and uh, which is so uh, this is matched. So if this is matched, so there will be uh, no reflection from port 1. Uh, so this Z, uh, S11 will be equal to 0. Similarly, S22 and S33 are matched because we have uh, this as uh, this uh, port as uh, matched as 1 over here. So and similarly, this is matched over here. So um, and the port one is also matched. So we have S11, S22, and S33 all equal to zero. And we calculated the value of V1, uh, En, v, uh, V1O. Similarly, V2, En, uh, uh, V2O. And using if we substitute their values, we will get S12 uh, equal to S21 bec um, because since this is this circuit is uh, symmetric, uh, we can uh, just uh, we, we can just uh, claim uh, S12 equal to S21, and both of them will evaluate to be equal to minus J by root 2. Similarly, uh, S13 and S31 for port 3. And uh, S23 and S32 it will be equal to 0 because uh, this becomes a shorter open circuit at bisection. So uh, nothing flows from here, or nothing flows from here. So this will become. Uh, uh, this uh, the S23 and S32 will become equal to 0. So uh, if you uh, if there are any doubts, then uh, you can ask them now. Or I'll, maybe I'll just pause over here and uh, uh, for the slide and let you read it. Uh, if there are any doubts, uh, we are uh, just concluded with uh, Wilkinson power divider now. And then in the next slide, we'll. Uh, slides will start with the uh, four port networks. So I'll be uh, just give me a minute. Uh, uh, you can look at the slide. Um, I'll be back in. Uh,
yeah so uh, any questions maybe uh So no questions, then uh, then we'll proceed to uh, unequal power division. So the uh, we can then power divider. So um, so I'm just putting it there that we can uh, also have unequal power division through the rules of power divider. So we won't go into the mathematics of uh, this thing. So just in, uh, so if we want uh, the power division. I think this has some type over here. So I think this should be P square. Yeah. So if we uh, if we want the power division to be in the ratio of A uh, such that uh, Yeah, such that the power delivered at port three is uh, by port two is k square. Then uh, in that case, uh, these equations will uh, come into play. So we have the z zero three uh, as the impedance of the sum, that is the impedance of the sum, and z zero two as the that is the impedance of the sum, and z not as the that is the impedance at port one, and we have r over here. So uh, then Z03 uh, turns out to be this value. Z02 turns out to be this value. And R will look something like this. And if you if you look closely, if uh, if we want and if we wanted equal power division, that is for K equal to one. Uh, if, uh, if we had K equal to one, then this will all simplify to uh, uh, this. Uh, this will, Both of them will become root two over here. And this R will become equal to uh, uh, to R or uh, to Z naught. So, uh, so this uh, just to verify that this uh, this thing works for uh, equal power division also. Uh, so this is the unequal. Uh, this is the this is the set of equations for unequal power division into two arms. So um, we we can uh, again. Uh, yeah, so um, this is all for power divider. I think. Yeah. So we'll start with uh, four port networks now. So um, a, a directional, uh, which is we are covering directional couplers over here. And as it's uh, at the end, we'll see the uh, the example for uh, we'll see these parameters for uh, rat race coupler or quadrature hybrid coupler. So we'll just start with the discussion now. So for uh, so this is this is the symbol for uh, uh, directional coupler, and uh, the other symbol that is also used is, is the thing like this. So the, the sport, this is port one, port two. Sorry. This is port two. This is port three, and this is port four. So the instead of having this. Uh, arrows over here we also have this if this, there is an x this also means that that is a is a directional coupler and uh, since this is a four port device this matrix will be four cross four and uh, we are assuming that all the ports are uh, matched so if all the ports are matched the sii they will be equal to zero So all the diagonal elements are zero now, and uh, if it is also reciprocal, then uh, this this S matrix will be uh, symmetric, and hence we will have the uh, this elements equal.
Now, uh, if uh, this network is uh, also lossless, then this 10 equations, uh, then we will have 10 equations from the unitary uh, condition. So we, uh, let's just consider uh, some, uh, some of them. Uh, so consider the multiplication of row one and row two. So this is your row one and this is your row two. So if we uh, just consider the multiplication of these two. So these elements become zero, these elements become zero. So we will have, we have S13 into S23 conjugate and S14 into S24 conjugate. Okay. So we have uh, S13 conjugate into uh, S23 and S14 conjugate to S24. So if you can I take either of them conjugate. And similarly, uh, um, we have we are taking what of row four, uh, three and four. So uh, from three and four, we have S13 uh, S14 into S uh, S14 conjugate into S13 and S24 conjugate into S23. And by using these two equations over here, so if we multiply uh, this first equation by uh, S24. Okay. So we are, uh, my cursor is not working. Uh, so uh, if we, have mul so we, we multiply the first one by S, uh, S24 conjugate and the second equation by S13 conjugate. And if we subtract them, we, we get this expression over here. And uh, uh, this implies, uh, and sim uh, similarly, if we do multiplication of row one and row three and uh, row four and row two, we get uh, these two equations. And uh, if we simplify them, uh, again, we get this expression over here. And uh, if, uh, if, uh, so one of the uh, so the one of the way when by which uh, uh, these two equations are true implies that either uh, s14 and s23 uh, are zero or we have to make uh, we have to make sure that uh, the uh, these terms this, they become equal to zero so if uh, uh, we have this condition true then uh, we we achieve what we call a directional coupler so so we are assuming that this uh, this is true and this ends up with the directional coupler. Now, uh, in the previous slide, we saw that uh, from the uh, we assume that uh, this uh, this network to be uh, matched lossless. Uh, lossless implied this matrix is symmetric, and then uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, we assume it to be uh, reciprocal matched and then lossless. And from the lossless. Uh, we got the, uh, these expressions over here, which for which we simplified to get uh, these two expressions. And we we uh, one of the ways in which these these can be made true is make uh, as one four and s two three equal to zero, and from which we get the directional coupler. Now, um, if uh, these two are equal to uh, if th these two are uh, zero, and uh, then the uh, we um, we use the rest of the uh, equations that we get from the unit uh, unitary uh, condition uh, for, from the scattering matrix. So we have S12 uh, mod of S12 square plus S13 square equal to one, and similarly for the other ports as well. So these two, uh, if you if you take a look at just these two, we see that S13 will become equal to S24, and uh, S uh, S12. Uh, So one two will become equal to S one three. So okay, sorry. Um, so there is some mistake. If you look at these two expressions, then we get this. So yeah, S one two equal to S three four S one two. Sorry. Uh, okay. So if you take this ex this expression over here and this expression over here,
Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, this S1, so once we have got this, we can substitute this S24 over here. And if we have this uh, S24 over here, uh, so these two are equal and this implies uh, Yeah, just give me a second. Oh, uh, got scribbled a lot. Okay, if you uh, if you look at these two expressions, we have S one three equal to S two four, and. Uh, so once we have got, uh, so and from here is saying S12 equal to S34. Okay, so I'm I'm not able to catch it uh, right now. So um, how we got this? So um, maybe 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 uh, I uh, let this mathematics for you to figure out. Um, okay, we, or we can come back to this. So this this should be true. Um, I, Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the if you take just these two expressions, so just ignore this particular bracket. If you take, take these two expressions, so we have S24, S24 over here, and then S12 and S34 over here. And if you compare them, so we have uh, S12 equal to S34. Yeah, sorry. So I, I just used the wrong brackets for the wrong set of equations. So we have S12 equal to S34 and S13 equal to S24. By using these two uh, equations, you get this. Now, um, further simplifications can be made by choosing the phase reference. So, uh, so we have simplified quite a lot of uh, the uh, these unknowns over here. So we first ignored these things, and then we uh, found out uh, this this term is zero. Uh, this term is zero. Uh, this term is zero. This term is zero. And now we have. Uh, S12 equal to S34. So this term and this term are uh, is equal. S13 and S24 are equal. This term and this term are equal. Similarly, this term and this term are equal. So we have uh, simplified quite a few unknowns from uh, this matrix over here. Now the next thing is we can uh, we have all these expressions over here. So we can choose uh, this S12 equal to S34 equal to some uh, the, the equal to some alpha over here. And uh, we can choose this S13 equal to S24 equal to some the magnitude equal to some beta. And now for choosing the phase, so we are uh, we are taking S12 uh, and S34 uh, as, uh, just as it is, and 1, 3 and 2, 4 with phase uh, theta and phi. And the uh, uh, don't worry, this these phases can be um, anyways manipulated if we. Uh, if a microwave circuits, for example, if this is just the path, so the, depending upon the path length, you can modify the phase any time. For example, if it is uh, 90 degree, if we have uh, 90 over here, and at some distance, this will automatically become uh, 95 if uh, this particular path is lossless. So don't worry. Uh, we, we're just trying to uh, write some uh, put some magnitudes uh, uh, to these uh, values over uh, magnitude and phase to uh, this matrix over here. 
So we, we have taken S13 as um, beta ej theta and S24 as beta ej phi, where alpha and beta are real and theta and phi are phase constants, which we have to determine. And uh, we will see that uh, we can choose any one of them and uh, get the other as well. So uh, take, uh, if we have, uh, uh, since we have taken this alpha and beta, so we get this dependence on alpha beta from this first expression over here is one, two plus this one, three, this square is equal to one. So we have a substitute one, two and one, three values. And we get this dependence on alpha and beta. And uh, uh, if you take the dot product of row two and three, then we have this expression over here. And uh, if you simplify, uh, you get uh, theta plus phi equal to pi plus two pi, uh, two and pi. Now, uh, so, this is essentially will uh, become something like this alpha uh, beta okay. alpha beta e power uh, um, j theta something and equal which will become equal to alpha beta e power j phi and then you can simplify so you will get uh, uh, theta is equals to Pi plus, uh, yeah, you will get theta is equals to uh, pi plus pi, uh, uh, pi minus pi plus minus two and pi, some, something like that you will get, and then you can simplify it to get the next question. So um, you can uh, substitute the values of S13 and S24, and these values over here, and try to simplify. This is some simple algebra over here. So maybe 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 I'll pause over here and uh, if you have any questions. So if once you evaluate this, you get this. You'll uh, you'll get this uh, relationship between the uh, angle or phase over here, and uh, this is pretty straightforward. Alpha plus beta square equal to one. So all we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to uh, reduce the unknowns, find assign some magnitude and phases to it to uh, for this directional coupler over here. Any questions from here? Let's we'll proceed. Just give me a second. Okay. So uh, for no questions, then uh, we'll proceed. So till now, uh, we had this directional coupler over here. We uh, wrote down a matrix for a lossless uh, reciprocal uh, loss. Lo uh, so we wrote down this matrix for uh, a matched and reciprocal network. So this became symmetric and the angular elements became zero. And then for uh, using the lo uh, lossless criteria, we tried to uh, find out the val values for this uh, matrix. So uh, one of the con uh, conditions. Uh, uh, we chose was uh, S14 equal to S23 equal to zero, and we got S12 equal to S34, and we assigned it uh, magnitude, uh, assigned them as uh, alpha, and S13 equal to S24, and we assigned them as beta j uh, phi and beta j theta. And uh, using uh, uh, after assigning these values and using again the un uh, unit, uh, lossless conditions. We got alpha square plus beta square equal to one and theta plus phi equal to pi plus minus two n. So if we ignore this uh, uh, this this two n pi terms and just uh, just take this condition. So you, using these conditions, we can uh, uh, we can get two types of uh, uh, matrix. So the uh, the first one is a symmetric coupler uh, in which uh, we have. Uh, in which uh, by using uh, these conditions, we get uh, uh, these entries as alpha j beta uh, and alpha over here. And uh, uh, this, is, this is symmetric. So we have alpha uh, j beta, j beta and alpha. Uh, for for uh, theta uh, equal to phi equal to pi by two. So we have kept theta and um, phi both pi by two. And the other case would be if theta equal to zero and phi equal to 
pi and that condition we get this uh, anti-symmetric coupler. So uh, these are the two popular results. So you can uh, we can have any arbitrary values for theta and pi. So these are two standard uh, uh, results that we, uh, we that we often use. And uh, uh, you have to note that these two uh, couplers differ uh, differ only uh, in the choice of reference plane. So the magnitudes are same and the phases are different. And these phases can again be manipulated depending on the length of uh, uh, the uh, lines. At microwave uh, uh, frequencies, we uh, the phase uh, can be easily manipulated by choosing appropriate length of the, uh, the distance which the wave is traveling. Now, uh, an exercise for you is to show that any reciprocal lossless and matched four port network is a directional coupler. So we have seen uh, uh, when we were doing uh, all the mathematics, we uh, we chose this condition, and we uh, although we could have chosen a different condition as well. So, uh, so you have to show that it, what any condition that we chose uh, will eventually lead to uh, the circuit only, uh, like this uh, this is uh, as parameters only. So uh, any uh, like do, during our uh, analysis, we uh, we uh, assume some things. You have to show that uh, those assumptions are the only assumptions that you can make. Or even if you take any other assumptions, it will simplify to uh, these matrices over here. And these uh, these matrices uh, are uh, for direction coupler. So uh, so we have uh, so we got uh, two types of uh, direction couplers, symmetric and anti-symmetric. And uh, so maybe uh, I'll just pause over here. And if you have any questions uh, from here, then you can ask. Otherwise, uh, we have a couple of more slides, and then uh, we'll be done. Uh, but we'll, we'll finish this module. Okay, so um, I'll share these slides anyway. So these are uh, all these steps are taken from Bozer. You can go through them. I have just rearranged it a little bit to uh, make more sense. Uh, get back to me if you have any questions. Uh, I hope uh, if once you do the math uh, by yourself, maybe by uh, using a pen and paper, uh, it will it will be very clear. Okay, so um, this particular directional coupler, we uh, we have two standard results for symmetric and anti-symmetric coupler, and they differ only in the phase values. Uh, the magnitude for both of them are in the same for different ports. And uh, so a few terms uh, that we must know that uh, so this uh, so we uh, this figure has been there for quite some time on the screen, but we have not discussed this figure in that detail. So this is the particular uh, symbol that we're using for direction coupler, and we have put one, two, three, and four over here. But uh, we did not discuss what these ports are named. So this, but the first port is the input port where we are giving the signal, and we're receiving signal at two, three, and four. And this particular port two is called the through port because the uh, port one and two are connected. And then at port three, we are uh, receiving the coupled signal over here. So we call this as the coupled port. And the port four is supposed to be isolated. Uh, so essentially in a, in a, a directional coupler, this port four should not receive any signal from port one. So this port four should be isolated. And so it is called as the isolated port. So the power supply to uh, port one is coupled to port three. So hence it is called the coupled port and the coupling factor is uh, S13 equal to beta square. So if you look uh, uh, in this, uh, the first row over here, so whatever say, power we are sending from port one, uh, nothing is uh, reflected back. So, and it's since it is matched. So this is zero, S11 is zero. S12 is the through port. So we are uh, get uh, if you're sending, uh, uh, some power over here. We, uh, we are getting alpha power received over here at the through port, and then uh, beta uh, power uh, is coupled to uh, the port three. And then again, port four is not receiving any power uh, since it is isolated, so it is zero again over here. So, uh, and again, while the remainder of the input power is delivered to port two, so uh, which is the through port, and uh, so we can write as one two is equals to uh, alpha square, which is also equal to one minus beta square because the, if we are sending the power uh, 
normal is power equal to one and if beta is being received over here so this will be one minus beta square Uh, also, uh, as we discussed, so in an in an ideal direction coupler, uh, no power is delivered to port four. Uh, these are some important terms that uh, you must know. Uh, so uh, the coupling uh, coefficient uh, is uh, denoted by C is the uh, in in dB. Uh, it is the ratio of power at port one by power at port three, uh, which is uh, this ratio is beta. Now, similarly, directivity is the uh, power at port three when uh, when uh, the uh, signal uh, by power at port four. So this is beta by s one four. Similarly, isolation is power at port one by power at port four. This is s one four, and uh, the uh, insertion loss is power at port one by power at port two, which is s one two. So um, let's just go over them one by one. So the coupling factor indicates the fraction of the input power that is coupled to the output port. So we are sending uh, uh, some signal at uh, in, uh, the input port, and then we are receiving some coupled output at the port three. So some uh, P one is maybe maybe I, can, I should write this over here. So P one power is sent over here, and P three power is received over here, and so whatever. Power is coupled over here is uh, given by the coupling coefficient. Directivity is the measure of coupler's ability to isolate forward and backward waves. So the directivity is the uh, forward and backward. Okay. So when we are sending a signal, so we have some forward wave traveling over here and some backward wave which will be received at the isolated port. So the uh, so the directivity uh, tells us the uh, amount of uh, like. The, uh, the coupler's ability to isolate the forward and backward. Wave. So if you're receiving signal over here, this is given by uh, and how much better the uh, coupler is performing. So if it is sending equal power at, in both these ports, then it is not a very good, uh, its directivity is bad and it is not a very good coupler. So it's P3 by P4. So P4 is the power received at port four. So this is, and this, this simplifies to be beta by S14. Now isolation is uh, the uh, measure of power delivered to the uncoupled port. So the this port four is the uncoupled port uh, port, and uh, if the, whatever power is sent to this uncoupled port, uh, the uh, uh, is given by the isolation. So um, so isolation should be uh, uh, high for uh, uh, for a coupler to be uh, working good. Uh, to have a good coupler, so this P1 by P4 gives you the ratio. So if this P4 is zero, that is no power is received, then the isolation becomes infinite. Okay, and similarly, the insertion loss is the uh, uh, in, uh, and the insertion loss is the power uh, is uh, the insertion loss accounts for the power input power delivered to the throughput diminished by the power coupled. Uh, uh, they were to the coupled and isolated port. So whatever power we are sending, some of it uh, uh, will be coupled over here, and some of it will be uh, sent uh, sent over to the isolated port. And whatever pow power is sent to the through port is uh, given by the insertion loss. And uh, these quantities uh, can be uh, this related as I is equal to D plus CB. So in log, essentially, uh, when we have taken log, so uh, the Things uh, in the argument of the log will multiply when uh, in case of addition. So I is P1 by P3. So this is P1 by P3. And this D is uh, P4, uh, P3 by P4. And, and C is, uh, sorry, I is P1 by P4. Sorry, sorry, sorry. P1 by P4 and uh, D is uh, P3 by P4 and C is P1 by P3. So uh, inside log, the, uh, the arguments will multiply and this P3 by P3 will. Uh, will be uh, 
can be cancelled and we get P1 by P4. So this can be verified easily. You can check this yourself as well. And the ideal coupler has infinite directivity if because we have S1 4 equal to 0. And uh, one, uh, so for example, if you have a coupler, so uh, you can uh, you can calculate uh, the power at uh, you can send some power at port one and you can uh, check the PC power at port three. So I mean, you by uh, using this, you can determine the beta from here. And uh, once you have got this beta, you can also determine alpha. So all uh, we're trying to say is that if you know this coupling uh, coefficient over here, then you can easily determine alpha and beta. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll pause over here if you have any questions. Otherwise, we have one more slide to go. Uh, then we'll wrap up this portal. So we discussed uh, the uh, these important terms. So this these terms also uh, uh, you will you can you will hear often in uh, other systems as well. For example, insertion loss or isolation. Uh, these, these are very common in uh, multi-port uh, networks. OK, so we'll, uh, just one more slide. Um, so uh, we we saw that this, we, we have a, a four port network uh, directional coupler and it can result in these two types of uh, couplers, symmetric and anti-symmetric. And uh, uh, so let's take an example of uh, at a few couplers. So for example, so hybrid coupler is a special case of this directional coupler where the coupling factor is 3 dB. Uh, then 3 dB implies uh, this port two and port three will receive equal power. That is, uh, and hence, the, so this alpha and beta both of them will be, uh, receive equal power, and they, they, this will be one by root two. And uh, this hybrid coupler can be of two types. So first is the uh, quadrature hybrid, where, which is the symmetric coupler, where we have theta equal to phi equal to pi by two, and this will result in this matrix over here. And the other one is a magic tree or a rat race hybrid. So these are uh, two uh, anti-symmetric couplers where we have a 180 degree phase difference over here. And uh, in that case, uh, the S matrix will look something like this. So we have alpha equal to beta. And uh, so the, uh, the theta and phi are 180 degree out of phase. Uh, so theta is, uh, theta is 0, the phi is pi. And this is the S matrix over here. So we have taken out one by root two common both of them. So this gives us S matrix over here. So um, we covered uh, Wilkinson power divider and four port networks. So maybe uh, I'll go back and stay over here at this slide. If you have any questions, we can take that now or in the next class. So we have co uh, completed module. Uh, Eight or eight uh, or now, and uh, the next class will start with module nine. And I believe in uh, two more classes uh, we'll uh, wrap up this uh, course. So uh, I'll send uh, uh, maybe uh, the uh, I'll send a Google form uh, uh, regarding the your feedback uh, for this course. Uh, maybe by today or tomorrow, and. Uh, so that feedback form will be important uh, because uh, it, uh, uh, it will help me get an evaluation of how this course went and uh, it will also be used to generate the course completion certificate. Um, so yeah, please make sure you uh, fill that feedback form. Um, if you miss it, then uh, it will be difficult for me to uh, give out the course completion certificate. Okay. Um, so we have covered this and the next class will start with microwave filters. So uh, I hope uh, two to three classes should be fine to uh, complete this. We'll, we'll cover image parameter method and uh, one uh, insertion loss method. Uh, the microwave filters part will uh, we'll be using OZAR as the reference. I'll try to uh, make some assignments as well. OK, um, any any questions? Uh, from what we covered today, otherwise uh, we'll end the class for today.
okay uh yeah thanks for uh, joining uh, see you uh, in the next class